Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In our last adventure, we took apart an X-ray transformer. Um, we did the, the primary disassembly on that. We're actually doing a follow-up video where we go deep inside it. But in this one, we're continuing our X-ray theme and we're taking apart an X-ray head. This is the actual part that generates the X-rays. Now the transformer, you may remember, had the, the big output terminals, the, the federal connectors. These are the other end of those cables. This, this is where the, the cables that come from the X-ray transformer plug into here and here. And they're even usually labeled, yeah, anode and cathode. Um, X-ray heads work on DC. So then you've got the smaller power feed. This powers a little motor inside that makes a, a part inside the tube spin, which is actually pretty fascinating, um, just the way X-ray tubes work. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to take this apart, and then we're going to talk about electron beams and all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, that's, that's the adventure for today. So we're going to start. Um, the tools I've got laid out here is I have an Allen wrench and some basic screwdrivers, nothing special. Um, things you need to know if you're taking one of these apart, they do contain a lot of lead. The shielding is made out of lead. There's also usually a lot of copper in them. Um, and the tube itself is under very high vacuum, and it's all the dangers of handling a CRT apply. They're, they're very dangerous if they implode in front of you. So you, you can get hurt there. When I get down to that level, I'll probably actually wear eye protection. But we're just going to start with some basic disassembly on the outside. And I've got these here, which are recessed Allen bolts, which we're just going to pop right out. Um, so nothing special on this. There's an Allen bolt. I bet they don't all come that easy. OK, maybe they will. So yeah, now the way this works is an x-ray head is a device that you apply a high voltage DC power to, and it generates x-rays. It's pretty much that simple. Whenever you have the combination of a hard vacuum and very high voltage, which is to say anything over eh, 20,000 volts or so, it's probably a little less than that, and somebody's going to write in angry letters, but I, I like to go at about 20,000 volts. Anytime you have a hard vacuum and high voltage, you have the danger of x-rays. And the higher the voltage, the more danger you have. This is designed to work at a maximum power of 150,000 volts. That's the KVP you'll see on it. That means kilovolts pulse. And most X-ray stuff tends to have 150 kilovolts as its upper limit. Um, I can't off the top of my head think of anything that I've ever seen. Uh, you'll see a lot of X-ray stuff from the in, in the 50, 70, 150 range. Those tend to be the common ones. And the cool thing is, I just got a really big set of scope rings. So. <laughs> I want to see the rifle those mount on. So I'm taking out the last two screws on the rings, and that'll take the, the cradle off the bottom. Now this is internally most likely filled with oil, so it's good to anticipate that and the mess that it will bring. And there's lots of pretty little bits of chrome and stainless steel all over it, which is kind of cool. Judging by the color scheme on it, it's uh, probably 80s vintage. So there, there's our, our first two rings. We don't need those. And that should allow that to come out of the base. So here's our base and our rings, and we'll put the screws with that over there, because that actually has a possible future life in some kind of telescope application. And then I'm going to take off a little guard here. Now this, if you'll notice, there, it's, it's all round except for this one part where there's a little window. And the little window is where the x-rays actually come out. And I'll take this off and then I'll turn it so you guys can see it. This is where we really need the, the ceiling camera. There's just four screws that hold that in. So there's our, our is it bezel or bezel? I always wondered that. Somebody write in, is it bezel or bezel? I think it's bezel, but bezel just sounds better. So yeah, it's just a little piece of crap. We don't need that, and we'll throw the screws away. So then we've got a, a ring here and a ring here, and those are out of the way. I think the next thing is to get into this. And I'm going to turn this around. Here, I promised I'd show you guys the output window. This is the output window. The, the little dot in the middle there is where the x-rays actually come out. And this thing in the hole is actually a piece of lead. 
So this, this is an aperture, and uh, the letters there mean something to somebody who works on x-ray equipment, but they mean nothing to me. But yeah, this, by the weight, is very obviously a little piece of lead. So we'll set that aside. We don't want to just toss that in the trash or anything. But this right here, even though it's opaque to light, x-rays will go right through that. So now we're going to see about draining it and see how much oil it actually contains. So I'm going to take this hose off. And I have a bucket right next to me behind the counter so that any oil in here, or at least some of the oil in here, because you can be pretty sure we're not going to get all of it, we can drain out before I make too terrible of a mess on the table. But I think everybody knows what's coming in that regard. I also really want to be on there. Ah, hey Mikey, come here with your muscles. Can you get those apart? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice color, isn't it? <laughs> Can you get a shot of that? We got we got to show them that the color of that oil. I, well, if I turn it towards the camera, it's going to run down that side, so it's probably not a bright idea. Grab, grab the little camera. We'll just get a shot. There. That's nice. All right. I'm going to tip this this way. Okay. You get some paper towels, and I'm going to try not to die in the process here. And it's in the bucket. But there's only oil coming out of one side. It's just transformer oil. More mineral oil. More mineral oil, yeah. There's there's no PCB hazard with this. Yeah. Yeah, the, the same rules when dealing with uh, this kind of oil apply as we're dealing with the medical grade transformer oil. It's PCBs are pretty rare. General Electric has never used PCBs in any of its medical grade transformers. I'm, I can hear this bubbling on this side, so I'm just holding one up and one down, and it's pouring out of the other one like crazy. It'd be really handy to have an air compressor right now. So if we just blew into there. Yeah, a little pancake compressor. That'd be handy. That's what they're called. They're called a pancake compressor because they, they're short and flat. No. All right, so we're going to let this drain, and uh, we'll be back in just a second, because this is going to take a while. 